Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, uh, your host of Ask Dave, and we have another episode today, a rather interesting one that uh, gives us a little bit of room to kind of discuss the topic of interference, QRM, man-made interference. Uh, the Q signal codes uh, cover something that's universal in every language, so it doesn't matter if you're talking to a ham in Swahili, QRM means man-made interference. So before we jump into this, I'd like to remind you to subscribe and click like and uh, help out the channel in that way. It uh, helps Google decide uh, who wants what. This is a letter that was sent by somebody named Boone57082. Okay, has a question if an operator is using a hotspot for C4FM and hitting the X command button on Yesu radios to access FCS YSF reflectors and not true wires X system. Uh, it's way beyond my ability to deal with it. I've never dealt with Wires X or, for that matter, with C4FM. But it is a system that's usable by multiple people. Sometimes uh, you can have multiple people accessing the system at the same time. Other times, if they're trying to use the same repeater to get in, you can't. And unfortunately, that's just a fact of life. Uh, what you get when you go with these digital uh, methods, you go into what's called a room. Uh, and it could have different names. Uh, for example, in uh, DRM, it's called a talk group. And if you talk into that talk group, it's like a party line. Everybody else who is listening to that talk group can hear you. And there are talk groups that are worldwide in nature some are very regional in nature for example there's one for colorado uh, there's one for the united states which is obviously very popular but a lot of other countries have them too if you want to practice your german uh, get on one of the german uh, talk groups and you'll find people there and it's just like a party line and that's the way it is with all of these systems now wires x is a uh, Yesu mode that uses FM instead of digital. Uh, same concept, it's a party line. And the problem is, of course, that with the party line uh, is that someone else may have gotten there first. And they may be doing some testing, which is what's going on here with that X command. Um, and uh, Boone57082 is frustrated with that. Now, uh, this uh, letter or email went to Zach Lau, W1VT, who is a um, senior lab engineer for the league. Zach is my peer reviewer for the Ask Dave column. When I signed up with the league to do the Ask Dave column, I insisted that it be peer reviewed uh, before it went out. Um, I uh, have in the past made some mistakes um, and uh, people have caught those and uh, you know if my videos had been peer-reviewed they would not have made those mistakes well at least i could get that for the column i don't think there's much video peer review so i try to be as accurate as i can in the videos and if i make a mistake i'll let you know now um, this particular question of somebody accessing the party line in such a way that keeps you from accessing the party line is common. I mean, it happens all the time. My mother grew up in an area south of Modesto, California, back in the 1930s when uh, people there had party lines. Uh, party lines were still a thing when I was in the Air Force back in the 1980s, 1970s. And the way a party line works is you've got a whole bunch of people on the same telephone line. And the telephone company will give a special ring, like bring, 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 uh, to tell you that you should pick up on that. Um, but if someone else was using the party line, you couldn't use it. What people would do in practice is anybody who picked up the phone could hear everything that went on on the party line. So nobody had any privacy. 
And if you had an emergency, you could ask the people, please, could you contact the operator for the emergency? So it was the same kind of thing that is happening here in these digital talk groups. Um, whether they're talk groups or rooms or whatever the different digital uh, technology talks about, it's the same concept. It's a party line. Now, the way it works is the party line exists on the internet, okay? It's a virtual thing. But if you are coming into your local wires X repeater or your local DMR repeater, you can get one or with DMR two signals into the repeater that go to the talk group. And that's it from your area. That's it. Now, if you use, and I've got one right here, this is a hotspot. It acts like a repeater, except it's just for you. And it's got a connection to the internet here. Okay, so you don't need to go directly into the internet from this thing. Uh, uh, okay, scratch that. You can go right into the talk room using the internet. So you don't have to worry about any of the limitations of your local repeater. Now, the thing is that like party lines of old, if somebody else is using it, it can create a problem for somebody who would like to use it. You know, if somebody says, um, at eight o'clock, I'll meet you in talk group so-and-so, and the talk group is busy at the time, you should have a backup talk group uh, to use or whatever. Now, this brings up the whole idea of the fact that there are so many hams and only so much resource that we can use. Now, I was mentioning about how the different uh, talk groups allowed you to um, multiple people to come in, maybe only two per repeater, but you can get quite a few around the world and it can get a little bit hectic. But I want to talk a little bit more about interference in general. Um, Zach Lau and his response shited uh, Zach Lau, in his response, cited something called Shannon's Law. Shannon's Law says that for a given amount of bandwidth and a given amount of noise, you can get a given amount of information through the channel capacity in bits per second. And uh, he, he proved that and showed how it was done. It turns out that the technology that developed from Shannon's Law is one what undergirds the internet today and allows competing signals, clashing signals and so on to sort themselves out to a point, okay, not always perfectly. Now I wanna show an example of the kind of interference that you can get on uh, say single sideband. Uh, basically, you've got a signal here this, this is the spectrum, so this is frequency up here. And say this is 7000, and this is 7300, okay. And you might be talking here, and there is a signal here, and this is what you want to hear. Now, when the bands get crowded, and they get especially crowded during contests, you know, normally people talk at a multiple of 2.5. So it might be 7051, 7052, 7052.5. And they'll often go seven, um, you know, they'll be five kilohertz apart or two and a half kilohertz apart. Two and a half kilohertz apart is plenty for use with uh, single sideband. Okay, now what happens is, and I'm gonna blow this up so you can see it a lot more closely. We've got our signal. Okay, this is 3D, uh, three kilohertz from there to there, okay. If somebody else puts their signal right here, 
you've got a problem right here because you're getting two signals. This is the very high pitch of the person. By the way, this is upper side band. Uh, this is the very high pitch of what you're hearing from your person. And then also pitched at a high pitch is actually the low frequencies of the interfering signal. One way that you can handle this and make things right is to adjust the bandwidth. And all modern receivers have bandwidth controls. You can adjust the bandwidth this way so that your signal cuts off here and it cuts off that completely. Okay, now if they're too far down into your area, there is not much you can do it, but you can cut almost half of the signal off um, and still be able to, to understand it. Now, what's actually a little bit more of a problem is if somebody is over here and they're like this, their high frequencies because that person's tuned there and you're tuned here, their high frequencies interrupt the low frequencies of what you're getting and add to them. And you get a <laughs> type of a thing going on here. Again, you can move the bandwidth uh, this way. Now that's one thing you can do. Now, speech, modern speech has a lot of interesting characteristics. Um, and you can also use your noise reduction uh, control and dial in enough. Uh, it will slightly mess with the signal you're trying to receive, but it will mess even more with the signal that is not where it's supposed to be. Okay, because these uh, algorithms are designed around human speech. You may never have noticed, but when you're in an automobile and you're using the hands-free mechanism to talk, the person on the other end can hear you clearly, but they don't hear the other noise. That's because speech is very well understood and algorithms that are in your phone can reject speech that, uh, or reject noise like traffic noise that is not part of your speech. So there's a lot of things that you can do. But I had this happen to me one time. A, um, I was talking with another guy, and he was, uh, and, and we were just enjoying a, a nice rag chew, and a suddenly a very large, a loud call landed on my signal, and I couldn't hear anymore because this it was turned out to be a missionary in Brazil was trying to get in touch with his headquarters via ham radio to order some more supplies. And he completely blew away. I could not understand the conversation. Now the guy in Brazil could not hear me. The person I was talking to could not hear the missionary. Now you may ask, how is it that somebody can transmit so loudly that you hear them really well, but they can't hear you. And the answer to that is that the ionosphere, which a lot of people think is reciprocal, if it works this way, it works back the other way. That is not actually true. It is possible for a signal to reach you and your signal take a different path and miss that other person. That's why sometimes you will uh, be trying to work DX and you will find that the DX station can't hear you, although you can hear the DX station. It does happen. Now, how can you deal with situations like this? Basically, you need to remember that ham radio is a hobby. And uh, as Riley Hollingsworth says, if you're having trouble on one frequency, every radio has a great big knob on the front of it. And that's this one right here. And when you turn that knob, it makes that interference go away. In other words, change frequencies, go somewhere else. Uh, interference happens. It's like somebody cutting in on you in traffic. They may not even know it. Just, you know, kind of let it go. Uh, I was recently uh, in Utah where people on the freeway there are no notorious for not 
being flexible enough to allow you in to make a, an essential turn. Uh, and so people get rather rude on the, on the freeway. I grew up in California, which is more crowded than Utah, but I've noticed there ever since I've been a kid that people are a little flexible. If another car sees that you have to get into that lane, they'll let you. They let you get in. It all happens very smoothly, very smoothly. So you can take the Utah approach of insisting on your rights, or you can take the California approach of live and let live. And I would suggest the live and let live, not because I'm from California, though I am, but I find that a lot friendlier way to approach life. So if you are dealing with interference that's man-made, most of the time it is not deliberate. Most of the time. I mean, 99% of the time, it's not deliberate. Now, what do you do with the 1% of the time when it is deliberate? Um, it does happen. But what happens with these bad guys? One, don't engage them. That's what they're looking for. They want to make people mad, and they're delighted when they do. Uh, two, these people tend to occupy a single frequency. They tend not to follow people around the bands. So they might be on a notorious one is 14313, uh, which has been kind of mostly cleared up by now by the FCC. It also happens with repeaters, unfortunately, and certain nets that get their share of interference. So again, the best way to avoid dealing with a bully is don't engage them. Just move to another frequency. And, you know, let the professionals deal with the bully. Uh, it's no longer the official observers. It's um, interference monitors or something like that. But you can file a report with them if it's particularly egregious. Some of these people who've been making repeaters uninhabitable for years um, are just very difficult people to deal with. Let the professionals deal with them. You go off somewhere else and have a good time. This comes back to that word perseverance that I talk about a lot. Persevere by going to another channel and enjoying your hobby with other people who enjoy the hobby too. So there's my little lecture on interference uh, that all started out with this question to uh, wherever she went. Boone 57082. So thank you very much for your question. We've talked a little bit about interference uh, on VHF in the digital modes and on wires X, which is an analog mode that, that uh, is used by Yesu. Um, and issues uh, with single sideband, and then the tiny 1% that wants to make trouble for other people. The idea is to remember to be flexible. This is a hobby. Do what you need to do uh, by just simply going to another frequency. I mean, these things happen. In any walk of life, we've got uh, about 800,000 hams in the United States. I would say maybe 100,000 of those are active. The circulation of QST is about 130,000. And um, so those would be your active generals and extras. And then there are a lot of techs who are active. Please join the ARRL because the ARRL provides the forum for dealing with deliberate interference. And, oh gosh, there's even more to talk about like uh, foreign broadcast stations and stuff like that. But you get the idea. Roll with it. Be flexible. Um, do what you're going to do another time or change the frequency or, or whatever it may be. But whatever it is, don't let it get to you because most man-made interference is inadvertent. Uh, most, by that I mean 95% is inadvertent. Of uh, the 5% that is advertent, <laughs> what's the opposite of inadvertent? Uh, purposeful. Um, you know, just deal with the, uh, and go to another band. Don't give up. Persevere. So there you have it. Uh, I would like to pay special recognition 
to patron Jason Rice, NI7L. Jason has been a patron for a while, a short while. He's a fairly new patron. And if you too would like to become a patron of this channel, go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Patreon.com slash ke0og and see what works for you. And until we next meet, 73.